Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to improvise with licks without sounding like a hack. And that's because a lot of people learn licks, they build a vocabulary, but when they use those licks in their solos, it sounds forced and just out of place. So there's a cool trick that you can use to actually make the licks that you've been learning sound like they're meant to be in your solos and not just forced in there awkwardly. So we're gonna do a demonstration here using the first few chords of All the Things You Are, in case you don't know, it's F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, E flat major seven, D flat major seven. We're just gonna go that far. And the lick that we're gonna use is a real cliche lick. It's a classic, it goes like this. Here it is nice and slow. That's over the E flat seven chord, resolving to the A flat major seven chord. So the way we're gonna do this is by leveraging motivic development, which is the development of a simple melody. And I'll do a few examples. The first one's gonna be very simple. We're gonna start with this melody right here. That's just one, one, two, three on the F minor chord. And then we're gonna repeat that melody on the B flat minor chord, transposing it up. And then we're gonna play the lick. Ah, okay, so did you catch it? I played the lick and then immediately after, I went right back into that idea, that repeated idea that I played. Here it is again all together and then we'll do some more examples, so stick around. Cool, right? Here's another example. We're gonna use the same lick but a different melody. Uh, let's try something like this. Hear how it all makes sense? Yes, the lick is in there to add that jazzy flavor, but it doesn't sound out of place because we wrapped it in this very cohesive package. Let's try this melody. I'm gonna do another take now with the same initial idea, but I'm gonna end it differently. One more. All right, so how do I do this? Well, it's, it's a callback. I'm repeating what I did before. So in that case, that end right there is the tail end of the initial idea. The initial idea was this, right here. That's the end of the initial idea, repeated on the B flat and minor seven. All you need is a little, a little callback to pull the whole thing together. So the takeaway here is to develop an idea, then play your lick, and as you exit the lick, you're going to enter into a callback to the idea that you were developing prior to playing the lick. Think of it as an exit ramp. You have to get good at playing licks and then exiting those licks so that they don't sound like they're out of place. And the way that you exit the lick is by calling back to what you played previously. That's a really good way of making your solos sound and feel cohesive, and it's gonna make you sound a whole lot better. Now, before we go, I just wanna mention I am running a Memorial Day sale across all of my lick packs, so everything's 20% off, and I have classic jazz licks, modern jazz, blues, soul, lots of different genres, and they're all really, really high quality licks that are gonna sound great in your solos. So, really good way to take this technique and apply it to some really high quality licks. Check them out, I'll link them all below, and use the code MDAY23 at uh, checkout to get 20% off. All right, that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.